All right, welcome back, everybody. Jiu-Jitsu Motivation Podcast. Greg Melita, owner of Hamptons Jiu-Jitsu, Black Belt, Second Degree. And Brian DeLuca, Black Belt and author of Jiu-Jitsu for Small People and Other Weird Shit I Think About. <laughs> you got another bi- uh, book now, too, right, Brian? Which one is that? Yeah, yeah, I got a marketing book. It's called I Got Shit for Time and No Money. Um, it's for it's actually a marketing book for people That's all to those. market. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, here, I'll show you a copy of it. But um, well, what's really cool, what's really cool is if you own a business, if you're a jiu-jitsu, you own a school or whatever, it's a really good book. It's all about nice. marketing and, you know, content and creating content. So it's pretty awesome. cool. Or you're, you're an influencer or whatever. It's a really good book to check out. Awesome. All right. So today we're going to be reviewing a, uh, a match and I've been calling this, this the Gordon Ryan Reap Sweep, or we like to say the Gordon Ryan Heap Sweep for all you guys out there. Um, and an interesting story with this is this was from the Nogi Worlds in 2018 in California. And what's funny is today, Flow Grappling literally posted this match uh, on their social media channels. Just so happened to be that we're going to be reviewing that same match. And uh, it's an interesting story, too, because we've seen a lot of the... Um, you know, the, the, the no-gi heel hook guys out there that that really, you know, changed the sport. Um, it was a lot of split, IBJJF, sub only. And we, then we saw Gordon Ryan in 2018 uh, find a loophole in the rules, in the IBJJF rules. And it all comes down to when at Henzo's in New York City, uh, when they do the referee course, a good friend of ours, Fabricio, was running the referee course. And our own Brian DeLuca was there. Take it away. I, I was, yeah, I was actually in that referee course with Gordon Ryan, and it, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting because, you know, if, if you've ever taken the referee course, it's usually them lecturing, you're watching some videos, things like that. There's some slides, but you know, Gordon was there in in the class, and there was probably maybe like I don't know, fifty people. I don't know how many were in there. Usually, right before an event, those those things were pretty packed, uh, you know, yeah. pre COVID. But, um, what was interesting is actually when they went over like reaping and all that stuff, Gordon actually got in the middle of it. Cause we were in upstairs at, at, uh, you know, at Henzo's and we, he, we were on the mat and he actually got on the mat and he's like, can I borrow you? And he grabbed someone else. And he was like asking them very, very specific questions. He was moving the legs into very specific positions going, is this legal? Is this illegal? Is this legal? Is this illegal? And he just kept going, you know, and he did this for a few minutes going through various positions. And I recall even he made some videos on it right after. Yeah. So that's, that's the story I heard. And it was awesome that you were literally there. Cause that's what exactly that we heard was that he was just, you know, Okay, okay, let me borrow you. Let me, you know, demonstrate on them. And then, uh, is this legal? Is this not? For the longest time, we thought that any leap was just an instant disqualification. And in this, you know, traditional single leg X or Ashi position, if that foot crosses midline, a lot of times in tournament, we saw instant DQ, right. you know, done. But when yeah. you're both sitting, there is a loophole there where you can have somebody in a full in, in inside Sinkaku, you know what they call it when you're over technically in a reap position with your feet inside your partner's legs in a triangle position. For the longest time, we all thought that was illegal, and it's not when you're sitting and the mm-hmm. your partner's leg is across your your hip in the right way. It's not across the outside hip, and we'll go into some more detail. But um, right. the point is, is this match we're going to review is right after Gordon did this. Uh, referee course and and really expose this huge gap where he could take his leg locks sub only um, game adapt it for the IBJJF and then kills it at this specific no gi worlds that we're going to see one of the matches from and then we do have like he posted he went downstairs right Brian and he posted yeah, videos he with down, with Natalia. Yeah, and he was making he was making some Instagram posts, if I recall correctly. I mean, that was a few years back. Yeah, but he did some Instagram posts, um, like right after that showing, because I remember like getting the notification on my train ride home, mm-hmm. you know, out of the city, like that he had posted these these pieces. Um, yeah. But he also did some YouTube videos, right? Let me let me uh yeah, me so, yeah, we got a YouTube video of the same thing. So let's pull that up real quick. Okay. So basically here he's showing um, he's showing the positions. I could actually. I'm going to have my leg fed across. As long as I don't have an Achilles grip on the near leg or a leg lace, I'm fine. An Achilles grip on the far leg, 
or scoop grip on the near leg is perfectly legal. An Achilles grip on the near leg, DQ. A leg lace, DQ. At any entrance into cross Hashigurami from a butterfly guard or from or whatever position, if I go into a sumigishi and I put my partner up into this position and I enter into cross Hashi, this is 100% perfectly legal. Okay? If we're here and she's in front of me and I elevate, I bring my leg over and she knee slides through, this is 100% legal. Okay? You just know Achilles grip on the near leg or a leg lace. Okay, and and there we have it from what he learned from. Yeah, uh, at that, we, we at thought that. that that one move was illegal for the longest time. I can't tell you how many times I was I was called out. Oh, that's illegal. That's reaping. And I'm saying to myself, mm -hmm. no. I mean, you know, uh, and you see that one clip that the her leg was across his right hip. The only way it's illegal is if her leg was across his left hip, which that tweaks the knee. So right. he even posted this, and he was very clear about this. And this was before that match that we're going to review mm -hmm. and. He takes his leg entries, and obviously you can't go for heel hooks, but what he does is he takes that leg entry he just showed in that video and then comes up after he gets his Senkaku, after he did the Kani Basami entry and gets the person down and locks inside Senkaku. He comes up and makes it two points with a sweep. You could easily turn that into a knee slice or take the back. So it, it was just amazing because then, so you were there live when he was mm -hmm. doing the referee course. And then I flew out to California with the Kasai team with Rich Byrne and Hollis Gracie to do some um, Kasai work out there. And, uh, you know, we were right there live. And this match that we're going to show, I was right on the sidelines for, you know, even Hollis was backstage with um, with Gordon talking to him. And it was just really cool to see this, literally what we're talking about, play out uh, the way it does. So. Yeah, so here we go. It's, he actually did this against Patrick Gaudio, and this is our gentleman right in the middle who happens to be refereeing this match, Fabricio, a uh, good friend of ours. He's the one that was showing Gordon Ryan what was legal and what was not, um, you know, it, on a couple of different occasions. So it's just funny how he winds up being the referee for this. So, And this guy, Gaudio, is known for being just a powerhouse. And for Gordon to do the setups that we're talking about, he does it specifically twice in this match. So look, He's pulling guard. He obviously he got a grip before he sat, so they didn't give him a penalty there. Look, he's already going for the entry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right off, right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, so he he doesn't care, and he wants to keep one inside butterfly hook. His inverts are great as long as he's keeping his button hips off the ground. He can keep his guard recovered. But always about Gordon. It's not about the athleticism and the speed in his game. He's very methodical. You know, actually. Yeah, can you rewind that for a second? I remember Gordon after this match saying that was the hardest hit he's ever been hit, ever. He gets a straight heel kick to the face uh, from Gaudio. Watch. It's it's so hard. Gaudio tries to pull his leg out. Right here, look. Boom! Oh, you, you saw oh. his head. You saw his yeah. head go backwards. Like you I actually think, see his head. I don't know if I'm if I'm directly quoting him, but I think he said he even got flash knocked out for a second. Yeah, he's moving his jaw oh. right there. Yeah. Uh, he, so yeah. So he's still able to keep his guard in here. He's got somewhat of a 50-50 kind of uh, position, which is cool because that's another way to you know keep your guard and stop the guy from going around as long as your knee uh, is intact here. So. He's still just playing his guard game, and he's still recovering his guard. He ideally is looking for the one butterfly hook half guard position that he always does. So, look, he's got one butterfly hook. Now, watch this. This this one. I'm just watching it here because this is exactly how Eddie Cummings did it when I trained with him. Right. And then he gets it, inverts. Now he's got Senkaku. But, look, all he does is invert and come around, and boom. He's right there. right there for a second. So, look, this is what everybody would think was illegal for years. Oh, he's reaping. And in this specific tournament in 2018, when he fought Yuri Samoas, I believe, he got him in this, and Yuri's looking at the ref like this. Like, what, you right, know, like, like he, why is he, he doesn't game? know. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, even he doesn't know that that's a loophole. Let's let's rewind that sequence again. I want to well, go over one here's, here's a question, too. Are, are there refs out there that would actually right think, there, yeah. think, it was, think it was illegal? Oh, yeah. I, I think at this point in 2018, there were more than half of the IBJJF refs out there would have called this illegal. And I think that's why Fabricio was put to referee this, because right. he's one of the top referees in IBJJF. So watch here. Gordon loves this setup when you go butterfly hook with the right leg here, all of the IBJJF guys were going to want to pass. And look, he's already doing a knee slice, Scoutio. So just go back one one little bit here. 
I remember my first role with Eddie Cummings. He gave me this position because he knew I was going to try to just knee slice my knee th between his legs, and that gives him a Senkaku. So watch here. Gordon's going to get the right butterfly hook in. Gaudio is going to drive his knee between the legs. Everybody does that. Gordon wants him right. to because, look, it frees his leg, and now Gordon inverts, keeping his right knee, if you notice, out. And right. now... And he locks, he, inverts, his length, right? he locks yeah. the triangle. He's got it right there. Now all he has to do is complete the invert. Look, boom, and he's down. Now watch what he does from here. This is this is the game plan. He sets it up where normally he would be going for a heel hook in a sub-only match. He knows he can't. He wants to get on his left hip. Watch. He's rocking back and forth. Look, he's going to rock left again. He's going to trap his right leg. Look, he goes left. He goes left. Can't get it. Look, can't sit up. All he has to do is get on his knees for two. Watch. He goes to the left. Now he comes back to the right just to go left again to build the momentum. Watch this here. He makes space, hip escapes. He gets his left foot under his butt and now comes up. Boom. Yep. That gives him two points. And you can't see the ref give it, but it comes up on the screen. Right here, Gordon's on his knee and that counts as two. Look, he just got a sweep going for his leg entry that he always does. And Gaudio's like, shit, I'm on the bottom. Let's go back um, one more to that. So we've been drilling this a lot lately. So yeah, actually, yeah, right from there. Gordon needs to get his left foot under Gaudio's butt. Look, look. Look at Gordon's left foot. It's not under it yet. He's trying to get it. He hip escapes. Now the left foot's <laughs> under it. And then that enables him. Look, see, his left foot clears. He's able to get up on the knee. Well, yeah, he need, he needs to get it under there just to turn. Exactly. Turn all the way out. Oh, let's repeat that one more time because these little, I'm telling you, we've drilled this so many times at my academy after I watched this live and I was like... Eh, you know, he is ahead of the game on this. Look, he's got the leg lace kind of position, not full leg lace. He's just trapping Gaudio's right leg. He wants to come. He clears the left foot. Now he can get up on his knee and he gets two points. And, you know, they scramble from here. Gaudio realizes, shit, I'm, I just got swept. And it came out of nowhere. We were just in a leg exchange position. And Gaudio, I think, uh, manages to get up. So, and I think in that particular position, I don't know if, if they gave it to him because he didn't fully secure. Um, but I'll, I'll see if the, uh, the the points come up. What's crazy is the exact same sequence comes up again. Nice double leg by uh, Gaudio again. But look at him. Right into his butterfly again for uh, for Gordon. Well, so it looks I like mean, think, think about how instinctual it is for so many people, just the knee slice right over that when it's there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, so then we go through here, and then Gordon kind of... So watch, this is the... I, I must have looked at this a million times. Gordon, all he's looking for is that one butterfly hook. Look, he's sitting around and he just wants to get his one butterfly hook. Now, there's the same right butterfly hook and, and kind of half guard position. But look, now he wants his left leg to clear. He knows Gaudio's going to see. Look, see? Mm -hmm. Now, here it is. Inverts again. He's got the triangle position on his legs. As long as he pushes him away with his right knee and he scoops that leg, Look, he scoops it correctly so he doesn't get the DQ'd, spins around, and look where he's at. Boom. Now watch, he just jumps up to his knees to make sure he gets two. There it is. And look at Fabrizio's going to, right there, boom, two points. So this is the, the Gordon Ryan, I call it the heap sweep, right? Because it's a reap, all right? And what I love about this is uh, we even got Dante Leon right back here, if you can see my cursor, watching. Because everybody's just watching how... Uh, you know, Gordon's utilizing this. So check this out one more time. And I really like the detail of Gordon's right knee. I think a lot of IBJJF traditional people that try to get the leg game in forget mm -hmm. that this right butterfly hook, if you see Gordon right here, the right knee stays out. It never gets caught inside his partner's chest. When people go for reaps on this in this way, they get smashed and they give up on the reap. It should be, it's because their butterfly hook goes inside your partner so look gordon keeps his right knee outside and look he doesn't care that look see that little slip out with his leg he doesn't yeah. care that gaudio doesn't realize what's going on he wants to just try to knee slice through see look he wants to get through that leg and gordon lets him but gordon's right knee alone is what's keeping gaudio away from him look he's pushing with that knee and he's elevating and inverting and now here's the key gordon's going to scoop gaudio's left foot there it is. And gets an underscoop right there. Now he can roll through and boom. He's right in the same position. And instead of doing the rocking back and forth he does, he just comes right up to his knee. And Gaudio didn't, didn't even realize what happened. Boom. Two points for Gordon now. And uh, in this particular match, you know, it, you can see it's 2-2 two, two with no... Uh, now Gordon just got up. Oh, another yeah, two. Got his, his points, yeah. 
So, you know, so he got the sweep points utilizing his technique. He's up two points now, and they stop it. So, um, and then the rest of the match here, it, it's really cool to see Gordon's bottom inverting game, uh, which is, you know, like a lot of the topics of his instructionals on BGJ Fanatics is, is, is mm -hmm. recovering guard, keeping your guard, and uh, you can see it right in action here. Really cool. And you see how he just lifted up his hand and pushed him over. Like so yeah. many people don't do that. They they like try to force him through with the legs. He just uses exactly. his other hand just to get a little more leverage to push yep. him through. You know, you're almost ready to take the guys back as soon as you just do an invert. You know, now we see the rest of the match here. Look, look at the same position. See, Gordon's got a butterfly hook and he doesn't care that Gaudio wants to clear the foot. Gordon sometimes even kicks his leg out to clear it for him, which he just did. Right. Is he, you can't really see, but his right knee, there it is. It kept the butterfly hook. Now, look, he's just going to recover again. You know, he didn't get it that time. Maybe Gaudio is catching on. But yeah. in a, in a high-level black belt match like this, no gi worlds, already Gordon just in, employed that strategy twice, gets four points out of it. Um, you know, and, and the rest of the match here, he's just playing his 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 bottom guard game, which, as you know, it, it's, it's, it's as good as it's ever been, if not better. Um, so cool to see how he does it and now look still it's it's, it's a four four now gaudio comes back it looks like um unless they messed up on the points there because it was four two wasn't it it was four two i don't remember what yeah, happened right there gaudio, where he where he where he got another two points right so yeah. it was for ryan uh for gaudio you know but i think at a certain point too like if i recall like gaudio just started backing out backing out of everything yeah in this fight like he was just Almost like having none of what Gordon was doing. You know, he couldn't figure yeah. out why, but he was having none of what Gordon was doing at a certain point. This this exchange is really cool. Let's watch this here because now Gaudio is gets up by one advantage just by doing this toe hold. Look, look. Gordon gets out, but now since it's four four, and then no advantages, Gaudio gets the advantage for that toe hold. And at this point, one minute left in the match. Gordon Ryan is down on points, so mm -hmm. let's watch how this plays out because this is a really cool transition. He's he's defending the guard now. Gaudio knows he's up by one advantage. Look, he's just pushing him away, backing out, and uh, Gordon shows just a little wrestling there. Maybe another little headbutt right there. Goes to butterfly, you know, plays it up here. Awesome guard retention again. Still Gaudio up by one. Gordon knows he's got to do something. Look, nice shot, nice wrestle up to a shot here. Yep. Gaudio's looking at the time. Look, now Gordon's on his back. There's a nice trip. Look, boom. Mm -hmm. Now watch. I, I love the timing of that. You can tell he was working his, his judo and wrestling timing just of his step to sweep that foot out. Watch. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And then Takes right the back. Out. Takes yeah. the back. And this is Gordon's power half. Mm -hmm. He does that power half Nelson, and he did this uh, at the last ADCCs as well to Hulk, and that's the way he won the match. Look, power half, he almost got the hook in, but he was standing a little off balance. Still couldn't get the back hooks for the points. Doesn't still have it. And see now, right there, Fabrizio, if you noticed, awarded the advantage for the almost takedown. See, that was the takedown there, but he didn't complete it. And once Gordon didn't get the hooks, watch Fabrizio on the left. He's going to award him the advantage right when, right there. See? Boom. Yep. So now it's even. Ten seconds left. Tie score 4-4. Four, four, an advantage for each one. And Gordon still can't get the hooks in. Time. Now, you know, obviously Gaudio. And look, right there, if you missed it, look. Mm -hmm. So... Now, people don't realize what Gordon is getting an extra advantage for at the end. It's for almost taking the back. He was so close to getting the hooks. Look at Fabrizio on the right. Watch. Right. Time is up. Right. Time is well, up. And then he gives the advantage afterwards. Boom. Right. Because he had the one hook in for quite some exactly. time. You know? So if you so notice, he, look, Gaudio gets up and starts cheering because he thinks it's tied and they're going to give it to him. But Fabrizio doing the right thing as the rep, you can't, you can't award – to the advantage until action stopped or Gordon goes for something else, but time right. runs or, out first. Or they complete, right? You can't give the advantage in, until you have a chance to see if they even complete whatever the back take, whatever it is. Yeah. So he was waiting, you know, and then exactly. time ran out. So and then Gordon realizing he got the extra advantage, he and then Gaudio turns and looks at the score and realizes, shit, he got up by one advantage and had lost the match. So now the guy who everybody hates on, Gordon Ryan, for never fighting in IBJJF, actually plays the points and literally to the nail-biting end of this match and, and gets the win. So really quick, just to recap here, 
um, Gordon's, we call it the Gordon Ryan heap sweep. All right. So butterfly hook and keeping that butterfly hook out on pushing against your partner's ribs. That's what's going to stop you from getting smashed when you go for this. And look, he clears the leg. He inverts. This is key too. He, he inverts, locks the Senkaku, right? And then fully inverts all the way through to get the position. Now, normally from here, he would be going for heel, heel attacks and legs. But what he wants to do from here is control the far leg and tuck his left foot under Gaudio's butt. So watch. He rocks back and forth. His foot's not under. So if you notice, he goes left right here first. Look, his foot's not under. He controls the leg. He tries to go left, but he gets jammed because his foot's not under his butt. So watch what he does. He comes back to the right side again. He can't. Look, comes back to the right. Look what he does with his left foot. He hip escapes out and takes the left foot under his butt. Now he can go back left and come up to the knees. Boom. And before he knows it, Gaudio is swept. And now Gordon, it's, see, if Gaudio didn't frame right there, Gordon would probably right. turn that into, yeah, turn that into a knee slice or yeah. something like that. And then Gaudio smartly comes up, wrestles up. We're seeing that wrestling up a lot more happening here. And then mm -hmm. uh, the second time, this is the second time in the same match. I've watched this match so many times for this technique. Uh, one butterfly hook and a half guard. Boom, there's the butterfly hook. But like I said, pushing your partner away, heisting and framing away with that right knee. Look, look. Pushing him away, hip heisting, and then underhooks. He's got the Senkaku, the triangle already, but with that right knee is keeping Gaudio away for him to invert, scoop the leg right in front of Fabricio. I'm not, you know, I'm following the rules. Boom, flips over, and then grabs the far leg, jumps up to one knee. Boom, right. and gets awarded two points. Yeah, I, I think one of my biggest takeaways from watching this is when he inverts that that triangle, like grabbing that triangle on the back. Yeah, because yeah. what I used to try to do all the time was I was trying to knee bar or whatever, I would keep rolling around and try mm -hmm. to basically stop flat on exactly. the front of their leg to do a knee bar. But when you have it locked, it sort of stops them from rotating. Exactly. And the biggest thing for me working for this, see, when I was in this position a lot, my right knee, would be like through the guy's legs because I'm trying to keep that Senkaku. Mm -hmm. And then you'd get smashed and then you'd get passed. So that most people are like, oh, that didn't work or leg locks don't work. It's like they're not doing the technique properly. They don't, you know, and this is at the highest level, black belt, no gi, Gordon Ryan is showing us once again, that right knee is framing. Don't let that right knee get sucked under your partner and you can get this reap all day, the legal reap. Yeah. And remember, even though this is black belt level, remember, uh, this is before they legalized heel hooks, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So yeah. this is legal at every belt level. You can do right. this. So this, if if this was now, this match probably would have ended within the first what minute and a half when he first set it up. He probably would have oh, yeah. heel hooked them right yeah. there at the beginning. You know? Yeah, that he would have got called for reaping right away. He would have got called yeah. for reaping right right away. So that's the. Uh, the Gordon Ryan uh, heap sweep. I love that because I was there watching this live. You were there live when Gordon was in the referee course. Really, asking these questions. Yeah, asking these questions. He made a video on this, basically saying, this is what I'm going to do to everybody at the Nogi Worlds mm -hmm. this year. And he even did it like, you know, we'll have to do it another time. But that same bracket did it in the Yuri Samoas match. He had fought Yuri twice that day um, and pulled off some great, different things you can chain that reap and turn it you know around into many different things back takes uh we're even doing it now when you can go into a crucifix from there when the guy mm -hmm. defends so I, I think a lot of people still don't even realize what gordon did in, in 2018 and you could really tie that it doesn't matter gi no gi all the politics now of ibjjf sub only this what gordon ryan did with these rules here and, and figured out this loophole it, it really doesn't matter it's perfect for any rule set yeah, and and I think that's where we saw a lot of people like almost like I, I want to say like people doing leg locks mm -hmm. becoming mainstream, right? You know, he was sort of the 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 predicator of that. He's the one that sort of went, you know, okay, here and let me show you how to win, even in the rule set of the IBJF. JF. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and you saw in that match. Like I remember when Eddie Cummings came out and, and trained at my academy. Our first role, you know, is basically like, all right, I want to go into this role. I want to see how these this leg entanglements work. And he basically let me like do that old school BJ Penn style where you drive your knee between the guy's legs. They call it. They used to call it the dope mount. And Gaudio did it in that match right there. You drove drive the knee through, but if you keep that right butterfly hook framing, the guy can't smash you. And when you're doing leg entries, that's that's really important. Um, so that was really cool to see that. And then the other topic I wanted to bring up is uh, on, a, on a pretty big podcast just yesterday, uh, they were talking about 
you know, what are we going to see for this upcoming Nogi Worlds? I'll be down there. Keep your eye out for JJM. We're going to go live down at the uh, Nogi Worlds, interview some people. But uh, they were talking about how are we going to see, are we going to see like leg locks now, the heel hooks? Everybody's going to be using them because they're legal in the adult division of IBJJF in the Nogi. And um, some people on that particular podcast were like, oh, well, we don't know. You know, maybe it's just, uh, you know, you don't see the, the leg lock game. A few guys were using the heel hooks, but not a lot of them. And at, to that, I have to say that I think, unfortunately, you know, we saw guys like Oliver Taza and uh, Robert Diggle has, you know, flew through the IBJJF and heel hooking everybody when they legalized it. But they have nowhere near the amount of guys that are big names in sub only. They're not really doing these IBJJF black belt level events. And at this particular one coming up this week, we're going to see a lot more of the big name heel hookers in this event. So I think some people that are saying, oh, well, the heel hooks, even though we legalized it, we're not seeing it too much. Well, I think this Nogi world, you're going to be seeing a, a lot of it. And I still think there's a lot more integration with the heel hook game to uh, to come with that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. I think we're just seeing sort of like the evolution of this, especially with IBJJF tournaments. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it's pretty clear. IBJJF knew they were they were losing their share and in, in, in getting big name athletes, so they they rightfully legalized heel hooks. I think it was a great move, and uh, we're going to start to see that uh, even more. I still think there's the people that are going to just avoid IBJJF altogether. They don't like the vision and, and everything else, but I still think it's going to make for I think IBJJF Nogi Worlds uh, this time around, and then when we see the following Gi Worlds. I think my guess is people are going to think the IBJJF Nogi Worlds with the legalized heel hooks is going to be way more exciting. So yeah. we'll have to I'm, see. Well, we will. I'm I'm just curious how they're going to – I'm just curious how they're going to move it along into like masters, right? Like all these guys that are adults, some of them are going to be masters next year. Like when do they move it into the other divisions? Because I, I, You know getting... what I think the smart move is we heard the argument against masters divisions having heel hooks, and that was a great point that, that uh, was brought up on our show, and I was like – you know, that makes a lot of sense, but I think Masters 1 and 2, I think, should have are going to be next. Hooks. Three and up, we would keep it off. And I think as as time goes on, you know, I think it was even Robert Drysdale mentioned that, um, mm -hmm. you know, why not even have heel hooks in the gi? Because right. I think most people are like, oh, shit, that would be terrible. But think about it. Mm -hmm. You have way more of an opportunity to defend heel hooks with a gi because you can grab and get grips. That was a great point. I, I, we don't know where this may go with from here. Yeah. The rules, you know. Let's see. It's gonna. Let's let's see what the next. Uh, let's see what twenty twenty two brings out of the, right. the rules set for the IBJJF. Exactly. All right. So, guys, uh, really appreciate you coming on, checking this out for everybody that's listening to this on audio. I would definitely recommend jumping on and checking us out on the YouTube channel to see the match that we brought up. Uh, also, don't forget, keep sending us your role videos for RMR. Right, reviewmyrole dot com. Send us your videos and we'll get them reviewed for you guys. Till next time. Have a great day, everyone.